But only if you submit yourself to the be benevolent will of the parents. We're back here again. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> Very benevolent. Very good. I love it. I love it when it's self-described benevolence, especially. I'm, like, that makes it really believable. <laughs> it's like if I was to walk up to someone and be like, "I am so benevolent." That's never. <laughs> I'm any, an empath. No person. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, I don't listen to anyone who says they're benevolent. Yeah. And most people who say they're an empath saw it on Pop Psychology Today or something. <laughs> yeah. It's at this I, point, especially like it's just, it's hard to like believe them. Well, everyone has like a certain amount of empathy. Empathy's built. No, like, I mean well, the parents. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I just, I just think saying that you, yeah, no, I, I'm specifically only an empath doesn't make a lot of sense. And people are better at being empathetic than others. Everyone's empathic, anyways. Uh, no, I don't believe the parents at all. And I think it's funny that they're having Marco say this to Amicus because Marco cannot intervene and say, oh, they told me that too. Yeah. He's not able to like interject in this situation to warn Amicus that this is the same exact thing they told him earlier. At this point, they like they showed us some kind of like existential threat, but you're like, is that even real? Also, is that you? <laughs> like, what is that? What is the darkness or whatever you showed me they even know, mean? It's basically like playing cards with someone and they can see their cards and your cards. Yeah, and they're telling yeah. you what to do. It's and like playing like, cards with somebody who's teaching you how to play the card game. Yeah, where, where <laughs> they look at yours and look at theirs, and they're like, "Okay, it's so like, are you gonna do this?" And it's like, "Well, I can't see your cards. How fair is that? Like, yeah. are you trying to make it so you win? Like, I don't know how to feel about There's it." There's such a massive asymmetry of power and knowledge, and they can read your mind, and they keep betraying you. <laughs> it's like, cool. This does, this doesn't seem like a healthy relationship, actually. It's a little bit one-sided, isn't it, <laughs> in terms of power? Will you? Amicus frowns his brow and confu furrows his brown and <laughs> brown. Amicus furrows his brow in confusion, unsure of what this all could mean. Poor baby Amicus has yeah. never thought this way before in his whole life. This is so <laughs> this much is for too him. Much for him. It's but I've already done so. Ever since I was a pup, we've been told to. After all this experience, your mind will waver. You're unsure as to what our intentions truly are. There will be moments in which you will want to question, to doubt our will. You must overcome such moments. Our will is what is best for the Galaxias and the universe as a whole. What about me? Fuck you guys. Yeah. Fuck the galaxy. What about me and my wants? Amica stares for a moment. And if I don't agree? Then we shall let the human pass on as he naturally should. And we shall wait for a future emperor to take your place. Someone who's more uh, manipulatable. Amicus shakes his head, not wanting to believe that this is true, that, that this is the way the leaders of the Galaxias function. It must be done. I want to meet another leader of the Galaxias now. And, like, see if they also clearly have someone that they're being used to, like, like as an anchor that, like, controls them. Like, if, like if there's another... Like, 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 there's one representative from each... Like, like does every civilization. does every member of the Galaxias, every emperor, have someone right next to them that has like a gun to their head, essentially? Like, if you don't listen to us, then we kill uh, your tiger lady. Like, basically, every every uh, <laughs> every person who's like talking to the parents has like a vulnerable individual that they care about. Yeah, it's like being in the mob and wanting to get out of the family and like, hey, like we'll come I, for your family. Uh, yeah, I, was, I know I know where your uh, your wife's really beautiful. She lives on this on this address, right? And you have like yeah. three kids, they're real cute. <laughs> like, the word benevolent being self-described is really sinister there. Oh, for sure. It must be done. The wolf is quiet. For once, wishing that he isn't in such a situation, wishing that he could hide away in the quiet countryside with his human to live a normal life. That is not your calling. It never was. I know. Amicus whispers, more to himself than the parents. There's a long moment of silence in which Amicus simply stares into space, contemplating what it means to give up any true freedom, to submit himself to the absolute authority of the galaxy. Will you submit? Amicus takes a deep breath. Will... Will my decision affect Marco's free will? You said you have plans for him as well. He will be allowed to make his own decision. That's hard to believe, given everything. We will tell you of his mission once you make your decision. 
Amicus stifles another growl, hating that his human is being forced into this as well. Will you submit? Amicus closes his eyes, feeling his anger and resilience slowly drain away. Then he opens them. I submit. And also just using the word submit, too. Mm-hmm. Sit. Aw. Oh. He looks exhausted. <laughs> he looks so... He looks like he's teetering. I mean, he looks thankful, But, he, but he's though. so happy. Yeah. Blue light swirls in front of my eyes in intricate, spiraling tendrils. It's beautiful. And as I begin to focus, I see a blurry gray shape in the middle of it all. Even before I'm fully able to see him, I know it's my wolf. I smile and reach up, cupping at the warm, fuzzy form. At some point along this little journey, I've stopped caring about whether the, th the things I see are real or not. I'm just happy that I'm seeing them. He smiles down at me. Hey. Hey. I lie quietly in his arms for a while, just enjoying the comforting blue glow. I'm reminded of what of when I first met Amicus, when our ship stalled out in the blue dust cloud, when he'd finally revealed to me his botched plan. That feels so distant now, like it was years ago, rather than just months. I take a deep breath, and something about it feels strange, almost like something mechanical is moving in my neck. I reach up, touching my fingers to my throat, and for a moment they brush against something that feels like a thin line of flesh. Horrifying. Enjoy the body horror. Uh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I have an anecdote, but I'll, I'll tell you about <laughs> it later. But Amicus reaches down to move my hand away, pressing it to my chest instead. You're alright. You're gonna be fine now. What? That's when I also realize that my voice sounds strange. It still sounds like me, but there's something slightly off about it, like it's a little higher, maybe maybe even just a little robotic. I frown. Amicus presses against my chest firmly, comfortingly. It's okay. I know it might feel a bit strange, but you won't even notice it after a few days. What is he talking about? Again, I lay quietly in his arms as I gather my thoughts. We have, like... Oh, we have, like, some, like, scary robot neck now. It's like something going on. Remember that, like, the, It's uh, actually worse <laughs> than death. Remember that, like, uh... What's his... Uh, Kato's uh, visor was given to him by the parents when he lost his sight. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Demanded by the previous emperor. Yeah, I, I didn't really think about... That was more set that. up for this. Yeah. <laughs> the fight... The dagger, the darkness, the parents, then... I look up at Amicus and question. What... what happened? I try to ignore the strange, soundless, mechanical clicking feeling in my throat, while also trying to get used to my voice. It's like hearing myself in a recording, which is not quite right. Amicus chuckles sounding exhausted, relieved, and maybe even a little sad at the same time. Quite a bit happened, Marco. But the parents, I thought they wanted us to meet them. Amicus's gentle smile wavers for a moment. Well, they did. I met them. What? I don't remember. I rack my memory, but nothing comes to mind. You, uh... You lost consciousness when it happened. I frown at that, wondering what would happen, but Amicus doesn't offer an explanation. What if it's like, um, we like look we look at him, and it's like Full Metal Alchemist where his leg and his arm are missing, and they use them <laughs> to transmute us a new metal neck? <laughs> like, what, what happened to Nina? Like, we didn't ask for this! Oh, no. there's just whole chunks of Am yeah. Amicus missing <laughs> yeah. now? Jesus he Christ. He traded his arm and his leg for uh. a new neck for us. Like, <laughs> uh. I don't trust those gods at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm reminded of, uh, was it, Haps posted, like, concept art at some point, or in the past, or maybe even just a doodle idea or whatever, but it's, uh, it's Amicus with a robot arm, like, fixing his arm. I don't know See, if I showed you that. You did, and it's because he had the same thought I did. Yeah. He was gonna sacrifice his arm for our new neck. 
I look down at my chest, and instead of the coating of blood I expect to see, I'm clean and bare, aside from a few small wet spots on my chest. Oh, from him crying! I suppose Amicus has been oh. a bit, a bit <laughs> more emotional before I'd woken up. I look back at him, then press my face against his body, and he responds by hugging me close to his chest for a moment. So it's over? They decide to bring me back? My voice is muffled against his fur. My strange, not quite right voice. Amicus loosens, loosen, uh, loosens his hold on me, allowing me to look back up at his face. Yes, it's over. The tension that I'd held in my chest ever since I arrived. Ever since being abducted from my bedroom in Italy, it all releases slowly. For once, I feel light and free, and I sag in the wolf's arms, sighing deeply. Even now, I'm starting to get used to the new feelings in my throat. I love you. I love you too. I smile up at him, despite everything being over, I can't help but notice that he seems a bit sad too. I rest a hand against his chest. You alright? Amicus laughs loudly, shaking my entire body. Aside from ne nearly losing everything I hold dear, I suppose I'm alright. Yes. I try to sit up, but Amicus keeps me reclined gently but firmly. You sure? You seem upset. The big wolf sighs deeply, and I feel his torso puff out against my side and shoulder. There are things I must tell you, but later. It's not important right now. I don't know if I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the tension that had been so mercil mercifully loosened in my chest suddenly appears again, albeit in a much smaller way. I want to ask more, but for now I just want to rest. Well, as long as I'm not going to pass out and wake up completely confused again, I feel like that's all I've been th been doing for the last month. Amicus huffs in amusement. Yes, you do have a knack for such things. We go quiet again, and it's a nice kind of quiet. We're both just basking in the peaceful aftermath of our month's long struggle. After a while, though, my wolf meets with my eyes again. Marco. Yes, Amicus? I'm sorry. Sorry. For everything. For taking you from the planet, for involving you in Astron politics, for acting as if I knew better, even if it was part of the parents' plan, it doesn't make it right. And I'm sorry. Plan? Amicus lets out a small, tired laugh, shaking his head. Again... I'll tell you later. Let's just be together for now. I nod in agreement, ignoring the clicks in my neck, cleaning, clinging to my wolf, happy to be in his quiet little corner of the universe, undisturbed by politics, mad emperors, or monolithic space entities. I think pretty immediately I'd be like, uh, mirror, mirror, please, mirror, 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 I need, mirror. mirror. What, I, I need what's to see wrong a mirror. with my body? Like, what's, can I what's, see what's, it? what's going on? <laughs> but yeah, it's an immediate panic. There's something deeply upsetting about feeling like something's wrong with your body and just needing to tell, like, and check, like, just having... I, I feel like there's so... I can't... Leave, it's funny because I can't think of any of them right now, but I know that it's, like, such a, it's such a thing I've seen a lot where it's, like, somebody wakes up, like, oh, everything's good, right? And they're, like, yeah. hands down and they're, like, they have tentacles now or it's, like, <laughs> they're fucking Darth Vader. They or wake even up just, and like, like, fuck. Or even just, like, the, the, the universal presentation of this idea that, like, if you wake up in like a, with, like, a tube in your mouth, you reflexively need to take it out. Like, you're, like, that's all you can think about, and you're, like, panic. Yeah, I mean, I do imagine that'd be pretty fucking scary. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, I wake up, and you're like, oh, why can't I feel my legs? Like, you know, some weird, horrible yeah. shit like that. Oh, gosh. It's, that's spooky. I don't like that. I don't like that kind of horror. The following days are strange, to say the least. After what happened to the amphitheater, the woven population has seemingly taken great interest in me. I guess I'm sort of a celebrity at this point. He's the guy with the metal neck! Woo! I got my first taste <laughs> of this while lounging in the dining room, 
only half paying attention to the screens when I realize that it's a reenactment of the trial by combat between Amicus and Kato. Don't they have footage that they just play it? But they need to make it dramatic and But it was already super dramatic. <laughs> well, that's, that, but that's real. People don't like real. People want drama. <laughs> I mean, if, if the way I was picturing it in my head is better than anything they could have come up with. <laughs> my character, portrayed by a small wolf wearing a rather uncanny human mask, <laughs> jumps in at the last second to plunge the dagger into Kato's back. It, that's also offensive. It's like us wearing tiger paint. He's then stabbed directly in the throat by Kato, instead of slashed and stands for several seconds, clutching his neck while Amicus tears out Kato's throat, then arrives just in time to catch me as he swoons back. <laughs> so that's, yeah. More of a flourish, I guess. It's, all the, it's, it's back to dancing with Mira. I have to stop watching at this point. The memories of what happened too fresh and traumatizing for me to see it played out, even if it's all terribly acted. While I suppose it's nice to be liked by the general population, I can't help but feel it's for the wrong reasons. I definitely, I'm definitely being portrayed as a noble savage of sorts. So in love with my master, I broke the rules to save him. Or I just didn't understand the rules well enough to abide by them. Oh, they're, they're making you Pocahontas. Yeah. Either way, it makes me f feel kind of uncomfortable. Meanwhile, Amicus has kept busy, of course. The quiet moment I'd had with him in the archives is actually the last really long moment alone I've had with him since. Gosh, no. Oh, they, everyone's getting in her <laughs> way all the time. Almost immediately after, Amicus is whisked away to various ceremonies and meetings as everything becomes official. Amicus is the Emperor now, and he seems to be taking it rather well, especially after the incredibly stressful events preceding it. His personality has always been silly, if a bit immature. But after taking the throne, he's taken on a persona of a cool, calm leader. It's a side of him that I've seen occasional flashes of, and while I'm happy to see him fitting the role so well, I can't help but feel a bit sad that he has to quash that playful, outgoing side of himself. I suppose it's one of the parts of having to grow up. I try to stay out of the way for now, knowing he has so much to do. But on the second day of the trial, I, I'm told by Calm that Amicus wants to speak to me. Finally. Was the was the anecdote you were trying to get to relevant to like the video at all? Or like, did you want to tell me after the video? <laughs> no, I mean, I'll... I'll uh, <laughs> see, it, it's definitely not relevant now, because it's just about him, it was about him touching something. We're, we're talking about touching something that was like... Gro oh, we're talking about, talking about the fl the flow of flesh line in his yeah. neck and how gross that would be. I was just going to tell you about how uh, I was trimming some of the plants in my aquarium today, and I was reaching behind the filter because there, I have some like long roots back there. And I touched this thing, and I'm like, "What is this structure?" I was like, "This isn't a part of the filter," and I'm like tapping on it, and then I remember for that brief instance that I have a lobster living in that tank <laughs> and it definitely was that because it felt like a plastic something hard i'm like what is this i'm touching it has like ridges on it and i'm like what the fuck what is this and then i remember i'm like oh i forgot i have a lobster in this because <laughs> i hardly ever see him i see him like once were you a month. just poking the lobster yeah or... I and then and then I, I wasn't sure if it was him but i moved my hand away and then a few seconds later, I kind of like reach back down to like try again and it's gone. So it definitely was the lobster. <laughs> You're just sitting there poking him and he's just sitting there. Yeah. I was wondering if it was like, I had like other ideas. Like, is it like a, like when you, cause you mentioned the lobster, the first thought was like, is it like a bunch of like, is there a bunch of eggs in there or is it like a, sh like a discarded shell or some other just, shit? I, I don't mind the touching of the lobster. It's just the unexpected touching of a lobster. That's kind of <laughs> the, the idea that you didn't know. And the thing has big pinchy claws. Yeah. And like, I just was like, what is this structure back here? This isn't right. Cause I have like a tank that's yeah. like half underwater, half out of water. Could you just like not see what so you're I'll doing? Re I reached behind the rock cause I was mm. cutting, I was cutting a, a like roots at like a um at like a paludarium basically so I, I don't know i just i didn't ex i was like there's like something back here and it's definitely not a fish it's definitely not like anything that i recognize and it mm -hmm. scuttles away i'm like oh <laughs> Oops. that was the story i remembered gave me a little shock through my heart <laughs> i open the door and immediately hear virginia's voice raised slightly in annoyance no Lux is a city in desperate need of funds right now. Lex is doing very well. 
Well, I'm sorry, but the names are rather similar, are they not? I meant Lux anyway. I mean, to be fair, they really are similar. Yeah. Even if you meant it that way, I can guarantee you the triumvirates won't be pleased hearing you mistakenly refer to which city they are from. Yeah, well, a day ago they didn't have jobs, so... <laughs> yeah, I'd be thankful I got them their jobs yeah. back. All right, all right, calm down. I'll be sure to remember that, and don't yell at me in front of the triumvirates, please. You'll only give my critics more weaponry if I'm seen allowing my own sister to treat me in such a way. All the more reason not to make mistakes, then. The two seem to realize that I'm there finally and cease their argument. Marco, we were just finishing our conversation. I do like them together. I think they're, they they work really well as characters. and they, We hardly see them interact, but yeah. I feel like their personalities balance well. Uh, were we? I'm going to drill you on all of this again on our flight to the city. Someone has to be the adult in the room. <laughs> Virginia makes her way past me, pausing to rest a paw on my shoulder. Maybe I should put you in charge of my brother's studies. At least he listens to you. The she-wolf rolls her eyes before disappearing through the door, leaving us in silence so that Amicus's big, heavy sigh seems to resonate through the entire room. God, she's relentless. Isn't that a good thing? I suppose, but it doesn't make it any easier to deal with. Amicus is walking towards me and immediately takes me up into a deep hug, followed by a kiss. I kiss back, feeling Amicus's tense body relax against mine, and I feel happy at the idea that I might be able to relieve his stress so easily. He finally draws back, smiling as he does. How have you been? I know I've been rather absent lately, but... I know. Official business and everything. I've been okay. Just trying to adjust to all the new. I sweep a hand around me, then hesitantly bring it back to my neck. The wound that the parents had somehow healed, my trachea and vocal cords having been replaced and repaired with... something. With what? I try not to think about it, and I've gr gotten used to it for the most part. Well, I hope you've been adjusting smoothly, then. Amicus brushes a paw through my hair, looking me over. What was it you wanted to talk about? Amicus pulls my, uh, his paw back and then looks, and the look on his face starts to worry me. Is it about what happened with the parents? At this point in time, I know that something involving me happened while I'd been unconscious. For whatever reason, I'd been kept unaware of the conversation that happened between Amicus and the parents. Amicus nods, rubbing an arm awkwardly. Uh, yes. It's rather complicated, so it may take a moment for me to explain it all. The wolf guides me to the sofa, and we sit side by side with Amicus, as Amicus drapes an arm over my shoulder. Over the next few minutes, he tells me of the deal he made with the parents, that he'd submitted himself to their will, if only to bring me back to life. It's a similar decision that I had to make, and I shake my head. I don't like that. Why are they doing this to us? Amicus shrugs loosely against me, shaking his head as well. I honestly don't know. But I can tell you that my view of them has changed quite a bit since what happened. So what? Now you have to do whatever they say, or something bad happens to me? Again, my hand drifts up to my neck, wondering if there's something more to the mechanics in my throat. Mm. An irrational part of my mind wonders if maybe there's some type of self-destruct mechanism built into it. I shudder at the thought of my throat suddenly exploding. I... Doubt that, but I feel that maybe they would make it difficult for us to stay together if I did. Our meeting together. It was planned by the parents. This is something I'd sort of assumed on my own, but I still bristle nonetheless. See? They're using our love against us. This is... This is just fucked up. Amicus just nods quietly, but draws me closer with his arm around my shoulders. So they just draws together. 
I was like the most compatible human to you, so now they can make sure we do as we're told so we can stay together. Again, Amicus is quiet, just holding me. I don't like this. Neither do I. So if your job is to bring the Galaxias together, what's my job? Amicus takes another slow, deep breath, which only spikes my anxiety. I realize that the, the release I felt in the archive room was only temporary. In retrospect, I suppose it was a bit silly that I thought everything would be fine after Amicus became Emperor. This is only the beginning. Well, this is what I wanted to talk to you about. I wait, feeling Amicus steal himself for what he's about to say, and I feel my anxiety grow. How bad could this actually be? The writing's so good at building tension. <laughs> Let me know what the fuck it is, please. <laughs> I'm very stressed. What if we, what if we like, had a bit more tension though? What if we just kind of like, kept like, going, like, just keep like, ratcheting? Like one more line, another line, yeah, another, another line, line before the dialogue other, starts. In other words. <laughs> Then, he lets out the, the breath while a with a rush of words, seemingly trying to get the explanation out all at once. The parents told me that your mission is to begin the process of integrating humans into the Galaxias. I'm only starting to absorb that when Amicus takes another breath and starts another slew of words. They want you to return to Earth and complete a series of steps to begin the integration process. A process that will take... Amicus suddenly winces, as though the words themselves hurt. That will take around eight years to complete. That last bit takes the longest for me to comprehend. Eight years? Eight years. Like, I'll have to go to Earth for eight years and do a bunch of crap to bring my planet into the Galaxias? Amicus nods and I see the deep sadness on his face. This explains why he wasn't exactly happy after we'd escaped the parental dimension. I find myself at a loss for words, even though there's so much I want to ask. Amicus tries to fill the silence. Your planet won't be conquered or anything. Rather, you're already on a sibling-like level. You're, you're unique in that you aren't exactly a sibling species, but you won't be under the control of another civilization if that makes sense. Aside from the parents, of course. That's a relief, I suppose. Though the more I learn about the parents, the more I'm unsure about any of this. While I'd once worried about the wolves invading Earth, I'm not sure I'd want the parents to be doing the same. At least they're very hands-off, I guess. And eight years? Will I just... Will I be able to see you? I see the corners of Amicus's muzzle dip down deeply into a frown before stubbornly pulling back up, the way they often did when he was trying not to tear up. No, but I discussed this with them. With, with them, I, but I discussed with them those supplements that we take to extend our lifespans. You'll be able to take them to make those eight years seem more negligible. Hell yeah, I was, I was just. That was my first thought. I was like, does he know? Like, he, does he not remember how, how short long eight our years fucking is? life is? Eight years is so much time. I know, like, it sounds horrible, but I would be like, I mean, in this situation, I feel like you have a gun in your head because the parents are going to blow your neck up or something. Yeah, you know? it's not good. But if, if there's a real situation, like in Castaway, where Tom Hanks is gone for, I think, also eight years, weirdly enough. I think something like, like, it's like... I think it's like almost 10 years or something. That's really specific. His wife moves on and gets another husband, obviously assuming he's dead, right? Which makes it really sad when he comes back, because I, I feel very deeply sad for her. If, if I was in this situation and there was not a threat, I mean, well, if I was in this situation, I'd probably have to go back to Earth. I would do what they said, because I, like I said, I had a bomb in my neck or they'd kill me or some weird shit like that. I'm afraid of them. But it'd be really hard to not see anyone for eight years. <laughs> yeah. I might have another boyfriend by the time Amicus comes back. <laughs> I, I, might to, I might have to have a castaway cast away situation where I'm like, can I have you guys both? Like, can we do a thing? Like, I don't know. That's a really tough one. It's very... You ask me to be celibate for eight years? 
It's also just like it's very deflating that like there's it's always the wrong time. They never can just have time together. They they never can just be. There's always another obstacle. There's another always another crisis. And now after all this is seemingly done, now you, now Marco has to leave for like a staggeringly long time. Like basically a jail sentence. Yeah, like all of this has happened over the course of like a month or two practically. And suddenly he has to leave for 8 years. And it's like Will that be it? Will that be the end? Or is there just going to be fucking more after that? Well, at like, very, At the very least, if you, if you get those life-enhancing or life-extending uh, drugs, you might be able to... It might, it might be worth your while either way. Because, I mean, you could hypothetically live forever. Um, yeah. Like, seemingly forever with Amicus. But it's more and more of the same thing that's been happening all game, which is always this promise that maybe you'll be happy later. And it's, there's always another reason to maybe be happy later, over and over again. And you never know if the, that train ever stops. Like, will you ever be past the part where it's later and you're actually now? I feel like, I just feel a way about about living. Where it's yeah. like, <laughs> where I work really hard now so I can be happy later, right? I was like, is it time yet? Yeah. Is it time yet? Is it's it a, time it's yet? a horrifyingly realistic plot point. <laughs> no, it's, it is it's, really distressing. It's fucked up. But I also just imagine us going back to Earth and everyone just being, like, us basically preaching something and everyone being like, you're fucking crazy. Like, basically we're going to yeah. be forced to be ostracized for the next eight years because we're forced to preach, like, an ideology that no one's on board for yet. <laughs> Alienate our whole family and, like, have no one like us yeah, anymore. He came back and he's just different. He sounds different and he's like it's a like weird... A, he's like an occult or something? Like He's a weird religious zealot. What happened to you in, in Italy? <laughs> yeah. Never going to Italy again. Yeah. Those are some really bad poppers. Uh, the way Amicus is talking, fast-paced and upbeat, tells me that he's trying to make this sound like it isn't a huge deal at all. But it is. Eight years. The arm around my shoulder brings me into a full-on hug now, pressing my face against his chest. I know. It seems like a long time, and, and it is. But after that, we'll be free. Amicus's voice is strained, like there's a heavy weight on his chest. We both know we won't. And, I, and I'm gonna have to do all of that alone. Couldn't you come help me? Now I sound like a child. I can see Amicus's eyes glistening, but he stubbornly continues to smile. You won't need my help. You're fully capable on your own. Besides, we'll see each other again as soon as your species of... as your series of planned steps are completed. Over the course of eight years. And once we reach that point, we'll finally be able to relax and enjoy our lives. I'm still trying to absorb the idea of a years-long mission. A mission that involves introducing all of Earth to the idea of sapient life beyond our planet. That idea is harrowing enough, but after being strung along by the parents like this, I have to wonder. I get assassinated for that. Like, I was going to say, it has like, such a worldwide yeah. change. Like, if it actually does catch on, like, you might be a really contentious individual. Yeah, like almost any, almost any public figure has conspiracy theories about them that are horrible and leads to some number of people wanting that person dead. This is like times a thousand because there's already conspiracy it's the theories. The entire planet. Entire planet, and also people already have a thing about how they deal with aliens if they yeah. ever heard about aliens. I think a lot of people would just self-destruct. It's a, it's a, it's a lot. It seems like after we accomplish every step, there's a bigger one right after. I feel my heart rate pick up, but rather than becoming angry, I'm feeling kind of desperate. How much more are they going to ask from us? This whole thing is just puppeteering. We're not in control of anything at all. Marco... Amicus reaches out to me as I stand up. Please. I know this is hard. I've been trying to figure out a way not to drag you into this, but the parents seem intent. This isn't fair, though. We paid our dues. I fucking died. Twice. Yes. Again, I sound like a little kid. I can't help myself. This really isn't fair at all. I didn't ask for any of this. Originally, I had Amicus to blame. He was the one that brought me here in the first place. Now though, knowing that everything was planned and orchestrated by the parents, I feel powerless. Like I didn't have any choice from the very beginning. I didn't even have a say in this. Again. 
Once again, Amicus essentially had to make a choice on our behalf. But you do. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Amicus has, has his paws raised, and I can see that he's still trying to hold back tears. I want to lash out at something, but I know that this isn't his fault, especially now. So I try to calm myself, take a few deep breaths, and swallow hard. They told me that you can make a decision, just as I made mine. I'm quiet for a moment, still breathing heavily. You can choose not to accept the mission. They will not force you to do it. We have around nine months before the mission begins. Enough to make a baby. <laughs> 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 Next plot twist. Oh my god, what a fucking... <laughs> What a thing to go for. <laughs> I stare at the wolf, letting those words sink in. And... And if I don't accept, what are the consequences? That deep frown returns to Amicus' face. Well... They won't provide transport back to Earth. Of course, it'll likely be... I'll likely be able to set it up for you now, but... Considering that the integration will be delayed... I would be disallowed from returning to see you. So either I do what they say or I never see you again. Well, you could choose not to return to Earth. I'm not suggesting that would be your decision, but it is one of the possibilities. I look away, just feeling terrible. And the main reason for that is because I feel like I have to do this. Even though I know Amicus has his doubts about the parents now, I know he still believes in their end goal, and if I just give up on it all now, I... I need to go think about this. I'm starting to turn away when Amicus abruptly stands up. I think he's going to come after me, maybe wrap me up in another hug. Instead, he keeps his paws behind his back, looking at me with an expression of stoic duty. All right. I'll be heading out to the city for part of the day to visit with the Triumvirate. And whatever you choose, Marco, I will fully support you. It takes me a moment to realize that Amicus is using his official face right now. And it's strange to have him use it on me. Even though I know he's doing it to make things easier for me, to not sway my decision based on his emotions, I hate that he has to do it. I shake my head and turn away walking out of the room even as I hear Amicus make a strangled noise as he cuts himself off and holds back from saying whatever he was going to say. Oh. Mm. Uh. Everything with a price. Well, this game's less over than you probably thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, honestly. Cause I, guess, I was like, oh, Marco's dead? Well... You know, that's probably <laughs> that's probably the end. I mean, I really just thought that was going to be like the the tragic ending I foresaw very early on. Yeah. I was like, oh no, it's romantic and sad, and then it, like he's dead, and what, what else can happen after that? I don't think he'd be able to be resurrected <laughs> a second time. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. There's a yeah. There's a there's more Ad Astra to go around. See you guys next time. Adios. Mm -hmm.